Hey, brothers and sisters. Uh-oh, I said it. Okay, I'm tired. You know, I, um, it's been a while since I talked to you guys. I want to, uh, you know, I want to talk to you guys about something real quick. You know, Elijah was one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. And um, he did a lot of things that the Lord told him to do, miracles. And um, anyway, he, uh, he um, challenged the prophets of Baal. And the, the key to this whole thing was the fact that Jezebel and Ahab, her husband, were worshipers of Baal, even though they were in Israel and, you know, the house of God and the, the temple and all these things, you know, and yet they still wanted to worship Baal. <clears throat> and Baal is the one that kills the, you know, they kill the children and sacrifice them to him. And so very horrific thing. So, um, he issued a challenge to all those prophets and there was either 400 or 800 of them. And, um, he said, Hey, <clears throat> if your God is God, then we'll say that if my God is God, then we're, you're going to have to say that he is. And I'm going to, I'm going to cut you guys head off. But if, if your God is God, you can cut mine off. And so, uh, the prophets of Baal, the 400 of them came and they, <clears throat> they, um, they built an altar and they begin to cry and pray and scream and screech and act off. And Elijah took occasion to make fun of them. He said, well, maybe your God's sleeping. Uh, maybe he's, um, taking a leak, going to the bathroom. Maybe, you know. All these things, and then um, nothing happened. So then he made an altar. And, you know, they made this altar a way, because there used to be tricks they would do. You know, they would have an altar, and then they'd have a hidden thing that made fire come out, I guess. And so um, <clears throat> the thing is, he he made this altar out in the middle of a, of this area. There were n There was nothing near it. And he had them, he made these, put these stones up, large stones, and then he dug a trench around it. And then he put uh, the offering, the, the wood, and then the offering on there. And um, he had them get four casks, I believe, of water. And they poured that water on it so that it had soaked the entire thing and filled up the trench that he dug around it. And then he said a very simple prayer and fire came down out of heaven and consumed not only the offering and the, and the wood and all that stuff. Can't remember if wood was on there. I'm not sure. I should have looked into this before I said this, but this is kind of on the spur of the moment. But this fire came down and burned that all up and burned up the stones of the altar and it licked up all the water and the dust. The, the fine dirt that was left over, it licked all that up. So then Elijah took those other prophets, the false prophets down to the Kidron River and he killed them. He cut their heads off one by one. And then Jezebel heard about it and she said, I'm going to come and do the very same thing to you. And so Elijah, this great man of God that just had this huge victory, ran. And... An angel met him along the way and gave him water and something to eat. I think it was three times. And then he came to this cave and there was thunder and the earth was shaking and all this stuff. And God was in this little small voice, right? And God said, uh, what are you doing, Elijah? He says, I want you to kill me. He says, uh, nobody believes here. And God said, look, I've got, I think it was 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee. And so God, you know, so, so many times, brothers and sisters, we put God in a box, the box of our own understanding, and we place him there 
And we put all these limitations on Almighty God, the creator of the universe. Imagine what, his, what how powerful God's mind is that he could design the, the sun that's in the sky and how huge that thing is. It's a million times the size of the earth. And it's been burning for a long time. We don't know exactly how long. And um, he designed that thing. And it's 93 million miles away from the earth. It's so far away that if the sun was had a switch on it and you could turn it off, that if I flip the switch right now, it would take almost nine minutes for the sunlight to stop coming to us. That's how far away it is. At the speed of light, it's almost nine minutes from us. And then God created these trees. And just the intricacy of the capillary system that feeds the water to this tree, right? And there are trees that are um, hundreds and hundreds of feet tall. And scientists can't even pump water that high. They have a very difficult time trying to do that, especially with that small of capillaries. And God designed all the plant life in the earth and all of the animal life. And it's all in the, the t independent. And it's like mind-blowing what God's creation is. And sometimes we put him in this little box of our own understanding and we forget. Just like Elijah get, forgot. You see... We are just like that. You know, this is a great man that just called fire down out of heaven and it burned up, literally burned up these rocks. There was nothing left. And then he cut these guys, his enemies, he cut their heads off. And then he ran from one woman. And we, and, and just like us, it's in there to show us that, look, you can, you can have these great triumphs over the devil and over your enemies and over life. And then one moment you can be running from your enemy you know and this is a multifaceted thing you know Elijah was tired because he'd been a prophet and he was trying to lead these stubborn people to the Lord he was trying to get them to worship God and no matter what he was doing or what had happened he just they would not and it started at the top with the very king and his wife. <laughs> you know, and so we need to look at what's going on in this world. And we need to see that our God is much bigger than that little box that we have for him to reside in. You know, we have a book and he's in this book. You know, the King James Bible is a translation of the original text that they can find. They, they know the Dead Sea Scrolls or the Elijah Scroll is 400 and something years before Christ. was. It was written, so we know it's accurate because it says the same thing that our Bible says. So, we know the Bible is true in every aspect. What God said, the inspired Word of God is written by the prophets and by Moses in them is absolutely 100% correct. Issues arise when you have translators translating it. So, look, um, you know, in my own life, I was praying in 2016. <laughs> Abigail's out there, and she sees a bird in the tree or a squirrel. Yeah, a crow. There's a crow in the tree. <laughs> He's going to attack the crow. So anyway, um, I was praying in 2016, Lord God, let me, let me have my life lived as one just by faith alone in Christ. And I kept crying out to God, you know, for that to happen. And then all of these things began to test my faith. You know, and, and you have to be careful what you pray for <laughs> because sometimes God's going to give that to you. I'm taking a shower or anything this morning. So, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And it's really bad what's been happening. But, 
You know, in 1 Corinthians, it talks, the scripture talks about if I have faith to move a mountain and I can prophesy and all this stuff, and then I have faith that's so powerful that I can move mountains with it, but I do not have love, it's for nothing. We have so many in the Christian faith now that, you know, they talk about faith like when people get sick or whatever, they'll use, there's two scriptures basically they fall back on, and it's one of them's in James 5 about people being sick and um, not being healed, and they want to say it's your faith, or they want to say that you have sin in your life. Those are the two things, and that's why you don't get healed. But yet those same scriptures that they, they cling to and they say are true, says if they have faith, this person that's accusing you, if they have faith, they could pray for you or lay hands upon you and pray for you, and God would heal you and forgive your sins. But yet they don't do that. They just want to judge you and all these other hateful things. The Bible says that their faith is in vain because they are uh, not in love. They are not acting in love. They're acting in pride and selfishness because they don't care about their Christian brother or sister. When I took the, um, I got the, the Johnson & Johnson shot for the virus, right? And I had a, a bunch of people attack me. Christian people, that missionaries and things like this, right? And, and saying all these horrible things about me and about what I did and how it's a lack of faith. And yeah, I should have just went, you know what? Whatever happens, happens. And I, if I live, I live. If I die, I die, I guess. And not care about my family. You see, we don't know what God's plan is. Elijah himself got sick. The sickness he was going to die from. Paul was sick. Hezekiah was sick. The king. All kinds of... Every one of these people. King David. One of the greatest men that God loved so much. Sick. Moses. Didn't even get to go into the promised land. He got to look at it. You know, he was, everybody, they portray him as being this young man in the Ten Commandments movie or in his 40s. He was 80 years old when he came back to bring them out. And so, same thing with Abraham, an old man, when he had, you know, God made him that promise when he, uh, to have his seed would fill the earth when he was about 75 years old. And 25 years later, he still didn't have the son. He waited that long, and then finally, Sodom and Gomorrah happened, and he his, his son came, Isaac. So, cost so much money to keep this house warm. I just bought propane the other day, and we've used up almost all of it in like three weeks, and it was like $300 worth of propane and more. 88 gallons of it. Gone. I'm putting new windows in. If you guys notice, I put these in. I special ordered those. and A lot of work, but we did it. And then my son was helping me on this window. We were going to put in that one, but we decided we want to put a slider in right there, maybe. And have a little balcony, and we could sit in the spring and eat out there. And we had that window out there, and a gust of wind hit it and broke it. But it was... We had two windows, and so one of them, both of them had the, the non-movable part of the glass was still there and good, and we were able to save it. And we put the other new one in right here, and uh, I know I got a Christmas tree, another horrible thing people will say, you know, because you can't do anything as unto the Lord for yourself without somebody judging you and attacking you. And here's the thing, the Lord is going to judge them their entire life. Every one of us are going to stand before the beam of seat of Christ and he's going to judge us for what we did. And if you had no love, you better watch out. So anyway, uh, I got, I had to go to Bakersfield like five times because we were sick and they thought we had COVID back in the beginning of all this. And it's, it's a four hour ordeal, right? 
Because it's like an hour and a half down there. And then you got to go to the doctor and wait and do this thing. And then an hour and a half back, right? So you're talking four to five hours going down there. And then we'd been tested up here numerous times. Numerous people had got it that were in the school system. So we were always like, oh, is this it today? Is this happening today? And then I have that thing where I got pneumonia in 2016 and it damaged my lungs. I've always had like I had asthma when I was a kid and stuff so I get sick but anyway my wife about three four weeks ago you know we got sick and uh, had to take Tamiflu and stuff and got better and then we were like I don't know maybe a week or so a week and a half and I was um starting to feel bad again my wife was like sneezing and stuff and feeling bad again and then on friday this this last friday i, I was so cold and shaking i couldn't even get i couldn't keep warm and so i went i laid down and fell asleep and then i woke up and i was soaking wet like seven in the morning and then i felt a little bit better and uh and then on sunday um i didn't want to go to church because i didn't want anybody to get sick you know, because you're still, you could be infectious, and so we had to do a little bit of shopping, and you can wear a mask and stuff, but I didn't want to wear a mask in church and expose those people, but, you know, because you're sitting right next to them in the pew, but um, I go, we come back, and, and like, I was laying on the couch and trying to fall asleep, and like, something covered my, I couldn't breathe, it woke me up, I was like, oh, what's going on, and there's like, this thick uh, sheet of snot had covered the, in your larynx where that connects to your lungs, it, it covered that. And I was like, oh, I had to jump up and ran in there and somehow I got it clear, you know, and I was praying and everything. And then M Monday came around and I didn't feel too good. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't go to church and then didn't feel good. And then Tuesday, my wife's like, you should go down and get a test. You know, I'm like, you go get one. You can get one right there at school. And she wouldn't do it. So yesterday wednesday i went down and got a i said look i want to get a test uh swab for the flu and uh do covid too just to see what's happening you know and i've been vaccinated i didn't get boosted or anything and the the um johnson and johnson is different than the other one it doesn't do what the other ones do it's a different type of system so uh and you can't say anything because YouTube could go, some flake down there could say, well, I'm offended by what he said. I'm going to flag this. And then they'll just pull your video and you can't, you can't fight them on that. You cannot fight them and they can shut your channel down. So, um, so I go down there, right? Have this test. They come in, you know, it took like an, an hour and a half by the time you're there or an hour and 15 minutes by the time you're there and you do the test, and then you got to wait 15 minutes and all this, right? They go, oh, you don't have, good news, you know, you don't have the flu, but you have this. There's my name, Gary Lowry. What does it say? SARS COVID 2 AG positive. Positive. <laughs> yeah. So I'm dealing with that. You know, and a bunch of people, I guess, at that church have had it too. That's what the, uh, the pastor retired and my friend Frank, he's an assistant pastor and he took over. The other guy comes in, you know, like on certain Sundays, but he got sick. He hurt his back years ago and he's had trouble. So I don't know why, but he decided he was going to retire from the ministry. Perry Stone said he knows over 400 some on one of his videos, over 400 pastors that have died from you know the disease, and so um, you know some other guys will say, "Well, those 400 men must not have had any faith." <laughs> you know, they didn't have any faith. The pygmies ate their wives and children, and then ate them last after they watched them eat their family. You know, they didn't have no faith. Otherwise, uh, something would have happened and God would have saved them. See, that's all the the, the fallacy of, of all of this stuff, you know, because 
God is in charge. He really is in charge. And um, just like with Elijah, the prophecy was that Jezebel was going to get eight. That's what happened. And the only thing that would be left would be her, uh, I think it was the palms of her hands and her those of her feet or something would be left is all, you know, and her skull, I think they couldn't eat her skull. The dogs would eat her. And she fell off there and that's exactly what happened, right? So, and Elijah, Charlotte, please. That dog just barks and barks. I gotta get, they have a thing I'm gonna get that you point at them and it makes them, it makes an ultrasonic sound and stops them. I think I'm gonna get that and I mean, here it is, you know, another Christmas and, and sick again, you know, because my, where my wife works, these kids, these kids have all kinds of, shh, these kids have all kinds of, um, you know, they get sick. And since we're older, you know, you, you catch everything. It's like a nurse. Stop it. It's like nurses, you know, they get everything. So, you know, it's hard when you're my age. And, uh, of course, God can protect you from everything. He can. He can do anything. But he doesn't always do anything. There's a lot of people that are Christians that have have died and they get sick and they die. So what, what am I trying to say? I'm saying, you know, have faith in God and that no matter what happens, you can trust on the Lord, you know. And uh, here I was thinking, well, this is going to help me out. And it didn't. Because I still got sick, like I said, nine days or whatever I was, this was tickling on me and I didn't even know what it was, you know, until, until all of a sudden, you know, I go to the doctor and they tell me, you got COVID. So, you know, can you keep me in your prayers? I really appreciate it. Um, I don't know what's going on. We know that the Lord tells us that. Um, he's getting ready to return. And many of the Lord things the Lord showed me about Ukraine and about uh, Russia attacking the United States. And people are like, well, how would that... Charlotte! You know, many people say, well, how would that be? Brother, look at how they're getting their, their butts kicked over there in in Ukraine and all this thing. But, you know, what I saw was not conventional weapons. I saw nuclear. I saw 3,500 uh, people die uh, that were NATO forces just outside of Ukraine. So I really believe, you know, that this, whatever whatever we see that's going on right now in the news and on which you, there isn't really a lot of information unless you go to European news. You know, I really believe that the uh, Russians are furious and they're, they've are they loaded four or more of those Sarmat 28 missiles and they, they carry enough firepower to destroy the entire state of Texas, one missile, if they work. I don't know, you know. Um, so, and there are four of them loaded in the ground. These are a huge missile. They can't put those in a submarine or anything. They have to be, they could be on a, on a uh, they may be able to transport them on a launcher system, but, you know, the ones they were showing, they loaded them into the ground and, and you know, all their stuff is failing here and there. But they said that that last drone, from what I understand, had Scottsdale, Arizona air, uh, information contained within and that's where our drone fleet is and our controls and they used they're saying the russians are saying that they used american controls to guide that russian drone in there with a, a warhead on it that hit those strategic bombers that they had there so you know the bible tells us in ezekiel um like 37 through 39 that there's going to be a war and that the enemy is going to come across 
uh, where the Euphrates is and it's going to dry up and we know the Euphrates is drying up. So it's going to come across there and it's Russia and China. So whatever happens, somehow Russia and China survive the exchange and they're able to do this, whatever, you know, whatever it is, unless, you know, I'm wrong, but the Lord showed me America's going to get hit and we're going to be judged. And when I questioned him on that, he became angry back in 2012. And he was angry and said, look, you know, <laughs> you think I'm joking? I'm not. So I don't understand what he was telling me. I have made some mistakes when I thought, well, this was God. But that was the other thing that happened to me. I had a dream about Donald Trump setting these targets. And that didn't happen. And I saw, like, Washington, D.C. get hit. But the thing is, I don't, I don't know that that was a dream from God. I don't know why I had that dream. Uh, but I did see Donald Trump... Um, them selling his memorabilia. And I said all that stuff. And so many people chided me and said, well, you're wrong, brother. Donald's going to be president again. You just wait and see. And then when he lost, they're like, well, the re the recount will come out and, and then he'll be venerated and all that. And then that happened and, and he didn't come out. So, you know, we prophesy in part and we only see in part brothers and sisters. So, you know, we have to realize that, that there are a lot, and we know that the book of Joel tells us in chapter 2, and I believe it's verse 30 something, but he talks, or 23, he talks about in the last days about him pouring out his spirit and all these things. And um, a lot of Christians are saying, well, that's why God gives me license to prophesy or have dreams or whatever. He says all flesh, but he's also talking about, when you read that, what he's talking about, the, the former and latter reign and all that stuff, he's talking about Israel and restoring Israel, and a lot of Christian pastors conflate those, those two things. Charlotte! They conflate that, and they try to say, well, he's saying that to the Christians because now, you know, uh, this or that, you know. But the thing is, there's a new covenant for us. They are still living going to live under the old, old covenant. In fact, we know this, that in Bible prophecy, it tells us that G Jesus Christ said that there's going to be another temple there and that that um, ab the abomination of desolation will happen there in that third temple. So uh, the Bible also says that the Antichrist rules the world from Jerusalem. So America isn't in the picture, really, the only one that is, is China and Russia. So I don't know exactly what happens. We have a very weak president. And, you know, who knows what would happen if Russia atta did attack us uh, with an EMP and do some tactical nuclear weapons against certain cities. What happened with Kamala or Joe Biden, those people may just fold up into nothing you know, and not respond, and uh, maybe our uh, military command, because when Bill Clinton was president, he took away the authority of submarines to uh, launch upon detection. You know, we used to have a rule that if they detected these, some, these nuclear submarines that are in charge of the ballistic subs, or in charge of response against any attack against the United States, they, they, are, they have an antenna, and they can tell if there's been a nuclear detonation, and they used to have a, um, they had a protocol that caused them to, uh, if there was a detection, to respond to that, you know, strike their targets because if they couldn't get any communication. So Bill Clinton, when they, uh, there was a movie with Denzel Washington in it and uh, it was about a submarine commander that was going to launch because their cable got cut in two and they couldn't co contact them. So they thought it was the Russians attacking us and they'd received an alert. And so, um, Bill and those guys decided that they're not going to allow that to happen. And they took that right away from those men to, um, launch on detection. So I don't know what would happen, what prevents... And there aren't very many Patriot battle uh, protection systems in the United States. 
there's only a, a battery on the, in California, and I don't know how many other ones. But, you know, theoretically, they could first strike us with a, a EMP. And we know right now the Russians had launched two or three miss Charlotte, two or three satellites that are orbiting about 300 miles up. And that's the perfect altitude to do an EMP to cover the entire United States. And they're, they're in a in a uh, polar orbit. So these things could, you know, potentially be the EMP or whatever. I don't know. You know, my deal is I have a little bit of food here and there. I have some supplies and I have some water. And what I saw was like the power goes out and then the rapture occurs and it was an EMP is what I, you know, I, from what I could tell in the brief moments of time that I had, you know, and so... I don't know what to do, brothers and sisters, other than pray. I know, you know, Mark Mer um, Merchinson had a dream about the rapture happening during Christmas. So maybe, you know, this was years ago, and this angel showed him that it won't be long now. And uh, I don't know, you know, what to do. I want you guys to have joy and peace. You know, we're... Uh, Christmas really is, for me, is a celebration of the birth of, you know, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. The whole world is going along with it, and they're all talking about, you know, Jesus and what he did and everything. So really, it's a it's a positive thing if you think about it that way, because they, the, the world is, no, you know, they're being forced to know that, you know, there was a Savior born during that time. And that he came to die. That was his plan. So, you know, while people can say all these horrible things and and, and be so judgmental, and those people are going to, like I said, we're all going to stand before God's throne one day. And we're going to give account for every word, every thought, every deed. And if you had no love while you were doing this, these things, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, what is God going to do? Are you even going to make it? I don't know. Anyway, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, my brothers and sisters, come before you. God, we pray for the people that are in Africa. There are literally 4,000 Christians, they say, were murdered there for their belief in Christ. God, we ask that you'd undertake for them and for their families that you'd put a spirit of protection upon them God in this country that you'd bring the gospel to those that are Christ died for there so many of these very men that murdered these people Christ died for them he died for every single one of us so Lord God we ask that you would move in the mighty name of Jesus to bring salvation to the people that are in Africa and God that you'd undertake for the people in Ukraine Zelensky I hear now as doing all this weird stuff and they're saying that he uh, is even persecuting the church so I don't I don't know what's going on over there but God we ask that you'd help that you'd move in the mighty name of Jesus Father that you'd move for our loved ones our, our brothers and sisters that need your help those that are sick we ask that you'd heal them God according to the promise of the word in the mighty name of Jesus we ask it and pray amen <laughs>